Welcome to the parts kitchen. Today we're going to be filleting this beautiful blue spotted sea bream for sushi, which is commonly found in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and don't forget to smash that like button. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to fillet this sea bream. First you want to set the fish away from you so that it's facing the other way so that the back side is facing you. That's how I like to start at least. And then you're going to want to use a really sharp fillet knife. Or you can use a, you know, sashimi knife. So what you do is you want to cut around the head first and then make an incision all throughout the back. So let's do that. And then what you do once you've made the incision, so basically I made a cut, um, I don't know if you can see it, just all across the back. Maybe about half an inch to a quarter inch. Um, I didn't cut it all the way through. But this is what I'm gonna do now. Just keep your knife flat and just keep cutting through the meat. And you wanna always kinda of hear that, that bone sound, so that you're not cutting through the, through the meat and then wasting it. And then once you kinda of feel, the, feel the spine, then what you do is you come around to the tail and you put the knife through, and then you just push, push the knife down finish off like that. And it's important you keep cleaning your knife as you go because scales get all over the blade and you don't want that shoved into the meat. So now I'm pretty sure I cut it halfway. So what I do is bring the knife around from the tail end and this time we want to just keep your knife flat again kind of feel the, feel the spine as you cut it, but you wanna just cut right above the spine. Keep your knife through the fish. And then just kind of push it through. There. And also notice I didn't cut the fish because I don't, really don't need to if I, fillet it this way. And then you'll have a little bit still attached over here. So what you do is you just cut it. There. So there's one fillet. So you do the same thing on the other side. Flip the fish around. And then you make the incision, you make the cut around the head. It's kind of a, you know, round shaped. The reason why I don't just flat, just cut it, you know, just perpendicular, is because there's a lot of meat, like right behind the head, because it's round shaped. So if I cut it just like that, I'm gonna be missing this portion of the meat. That's why I'm cutting just around the head and just bring it over this way and there, nice and round. And then make an incision, yep, about a quarter inch incision all the way across. And then towards the end, I'm just gonna bring it over 
do this process now. Okay, now I'm gonna, you know, keep cutting through, and then just keep cutting through till I touch the spine. Keep your knife flat. If you hold it in a weird angle, you'll end up wasting a lot of the meat. So just cut it with your knife flat until you hear that, that spine. Okay. So once you do that, um, since we already have the tail cut out, keep your knife flat, just cut it through the through the bottom by keeping it just right above the spine of the fish. Like you want to be able to feel the spine and then towards the end I want to just apply a little bit of pressure and just cut through all the way just like that. And then just cut this off. Boom. And this goes bye bye. So now what I'm gonna do is take my my sushi knife and just cut the rib bones off. And in the process, I'm gonna be cutting whatever the gut sack that is still attached that was, you know, enclosing all the guts. So you feel the over here. You definitely feel the start of the rib bones. You wanna just put your knife right behind it. There. Then you want to just kind of apply some pressure. And just like that. Once you uh, get a good grip, you, you should be able to slide this right out. There. And do the same thing for this piece. Let's find the... Oh, I guess my cat's here. The next step will be cutting the skin off. And this part's actually really easy. So you just make a little incision. And if you, as long as you keep your knife flat, you should be able to separate the meat from the skin on the bottom. So this is what it looks like. And then what you do is Oh, there's a dog barking outside. Um, just pull the skin while you cut the meat all the way through. There. And do the same thing. There, nice and clean. So 
So the next thing you do is you still gotta get all the pin bones out. So if you just put the fish flat on the board and you'll be able to feel the, the bones exist from all the way here, all the way to the end. And same thing over here, starts from here all the way to the end. So what I, so what I end up doing is basically just cut a very thin slice out. Obviously you wanna, you don't wanna waste any of the meat. But then the last thing you want is, you know, bone in your mouth when you're eating your sushi, right? So yeah. Now I cut this thing off and this part is completely bone free. So I set this over here. This one's another bone-free filet. Looks so like I gotta cut this part off. Okay. And luckily on this one, you know, I get all this over here. So all I gotta do is just this right over here. Yep. Kind of messed up on that one. I'll probably get yelled at if, I'm a, if I was a sushi chef. There. Now we have our four, well two, that's cut in half. Beautiful sea brain filet. That's ready to be cut into little nigiri pieces. So there's a little bit of skin that's still attached to this fish. You know, some people don't mind um, eating like just a tiny bit of skin, but if you're concerned, you can always kind of you know, shave, shave this off. Make sure you do it. Cut a very thin slice though. I may have skinned it a little too close on this one. Yeah, well, that's probably good enough. So now we have all these beautiful fillets of sea bream. We just gotta cut it into very thin pieces. Not too thin, but you know how thin they should be. Um, so I'll start with this big piece here. And I will probably start from here, go diagonal. Starting from the second piece, I think it'll be nice. Try not to go back and forth. Sometimes it's hard with a knife that is not as long. But, you know, try to start from the tip so that you can prevent going back and forth. There you go.
I think my knife is only about 8 inches long so I really have to start from the heel of the knife so that I can use every inch of that knife. Say I start from the middle of the knife, I'm not gonna have enough, enough length to be able to do one stroke on this fish. Now I'm just plating these little pieces onto a plate. And these extra pieces, you just kind of cut it and you can eat it as sashimi. Gotta make sure I always clean the board and my knife as I go. Oh, I went back and forth on that one. <laughs> So as you cut it, you'll realize that you won't be able to use every slice for nigiri. Some pieces are just too small or oddly shaped. The sea bream is not the biggest fish, you know, whereas like a tuna or salmon, you start with a already big fillet that you'll get an evenly sliced cut all throughout your fillet, but this is not the case here. So you'll end up using about 70% of your fillet and um, you know rest 30% for sashimi I think that's a job well done There's also a lot you can do with those sashimi pieces. You can either make them carpaccio or crudo or just eat them with soy sauce and wasabi. If you want to see how I made this sushi from start to finish, including the rice, definitely check out my other video. I dropped the link below in the description section. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. It helps me out a lot to put out these videos every week. So this is what the final product looks like, definitely check out my other video on the whole process but the ones in the front with the lemon zest are the sea bream sushi and they're absolutely delicious.